David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Uh, the pen I have for you today is a brand new pen from the Keras Pen Company. Uh, it is something that they have been selling at select pen shows over the last year or so, and now it is being made available to everyone through their website. Uh, that pen is the Vertex. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Keras Pen Vertex, talk about what I care for, what I don't care for, I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, thanks go out to Kara's Pen Company for providing this pen for review. Uh, the pen arrives in this very cool metal box. Uh, the box is fully machined from a solid block of aircraft grade aluminum. Uh, the lid is metal and anodized black. Um, it's engraved with the name of the pen, and then there is a, a little dimple here at the end to help keep it closed. Um, I like that the use and care guide is this just basically simply engraved on the back of the lid. Uh, that's a unique use of the space, and I'm sure that it saves in production costs having to uh, say not print up a little manual. Uh, it actually says at the bottom of the instructions here, uh, not, you, or not for use as chopsticks, magician's wand, hammer, nail, or other non-pen product, though the Vertex can create some magic. And then nestled here inside some of this soft foam is the Keras Pen Company Vertex. Uh, now, this pen is named the Vertex, not to be confused with Vortex. A Vertex is a point where uh, two or more lines or curves or edges meet, and a Vortex is kind of a mass of whirling fluid or air like a whirlpool or a whirlwind. Um, this pen is available in a number of limited edition models and a production model. Uh, actually, two production models. Uh, what I have here is one of the limited edition models called the Chrysiopeia. I'm, I'm probably butchering that name, but that term relates to alchemy and describes the transformation of an object or substance into gold. Um, it's made from uh, an acrylate called Cuervo, which was created by the now defunct company Omas. Um, this material is a deep, dark black, and it's ribboned in subtle gold. Uh, the gold and white swirls are really more evident when you hold the pen up to the light. Uh, when the light catches the gold, uh, right, it really breathes some life into this material. Um, with its take on the classic cigar shape, uh, the Vertex has a streamlined and aerodynamic look about it. Uh, there was only 50 of these models made, as well as a small number of two other limited edition versions of this pen, uh, which were made available earlier this month, and they quickly sold out. So this specific model is no longer available, what, but what they do offer is two production models of this pen. Uh, one model is made with a standard black or dark green acrylic, and the other model is made from Delrin. Uh, Delrin is a durable industrial resin that's used a lot in the aerospace and autom automotive industries. Uh, the Delrin is available in both a black and white version. And for all the models, you have your choice of a number of colored sections. Uh, if you want, Keras makes actually makes the uh, sections available to purchase on their own. So if you're someone who likes changing up the look of your pen, then this pen offers the opportunity to do so. Uh, let's take a closer look at this pen by starting at the end of the cap. Uh, the end is concave. You know, I've always liked dimpled caps. I have a tendency to kind of play around with them, almost like a fidget toy whenever I hold on to them. Uh, the cap angles up uh, to about this point, and then it is straight for the remainder of the cap. Um, there is a rounded step down to the barrel, which is not very steep. And at the beginning of the barrel, we have a nice ink window, which I'll discuss more in just a little bit. Uh, the barrel tapers down just slightly at first, then a steeper angle until you have a rounded point at the end. Uh, the cap snaps off, and underneath we have something I really like on this pen, which is 
the number six nib. Um, I'm really liking this new nib design for Keras. Uh, I'm not a fan of laser engraved nib designs as a whole, but I think this one is pretty sharp. Uh, it says Keras and it has an interesting lined design. One small thing, however, the breather hole isn't quite centered in the design. Uh, it's something I didn't even notice until I looked at this nib with a loop. So to the naked eye, you might not even notice it. And it might just be specific to this pen as well. Uh, these nibs are produced by Bach and are available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and then 1.1 and 1.5 millimeter stubs. Uh, a two-tone steel nib is available as an upgrade, as well as a titanium and gold nib options. Uh, and then here is a look at the plastic feed. You'll see in the writing sample, but I'm really liking this 1.1 stub on this pen. Uh, I like the added flair that it really gives my handwriting. Uh, the section begins with a bit of a flare, and it is very translucent. I wouldn't quite call it transparent, but it's very close to being so. They call this their Italian ice section. Uh, I like the design of this section. Uh, the back quarter inch here is the portion that I spoke of earlier that acts as an ink window, and I like the dual functionality of this design. Uh, I find the vertex to be comfortable in the hand. Uh, since this is a snap cap, there are no exterior threads, and it's plenty long enough to use unposted. If you should choose to post the pen, it does post deeply and securely, uh, and the rounded edge on the cap prevents this transition from being sharp on your hand, which is nice. Uh, and I find this cap to be light enough that it doesn't back weight or throw off the balance of this pen at all. If you like to post your pens, then this is a good material, a good pen to do so. Um, Overall, this is a fairly light pen, but the materials don't feel lightweight or cheap. Uh, the Vertex is a cartridge converter pen. Uh, it accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is included, uh, but this pen is really meant to eyedropper. Um, it'll hold over two milliliters of ink, so that's a decent ink capacity. And there's an even uh, an internal O-ring in here. So if you choose to eyedropper this pen, silicone grease is not necessarily required. There's no harm in using it for added layer of protection, but the O-ring in here should suffice. Now, initially I inked up this pen with a converter, mainly uh, so that the feed would stay somewhat translucent for this review. Uh, when you eyedropper this pen, it has a tendency to kind of fill the section and give the pen a little bit of a different look. Uh, but I definitely will be eyedropping this pen at a later date. Uh, both the acrylic and Delrin production models of the Vertex re retail for a base price of $130 with a steel nib or $210 with a gold nib. Uh, with some pens, uh, you like them, but you kind of think in your mind, hey, only if this had a gold nib, it would be that much better. Uh, with the Vertex, I'm really fine with this steel nib. Uh, it performs well, and it doesn't really leave me wishing like this pen had something else on it. Uh, the Vertex is nice. Uh, I like the sleek looks. Uh, the, this almost acrylic is cool, but the standard acrylic and Delrin models look really nice as well. Um, I have a feeling that uh, you'll be seeing this pen pop up in future ink reviews. Uh, this 1.0 one nib shows off ink very nicely. Uh, thanks again. Go out to Keras Pen Company for providing this pen for review. Uh, there is a link below in the notes to where you can check out this pen on the Keras site. So now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Keras Company Vertex. Uh, with a couple of other Keras pens, uh, here it is with a reactor, uh, and then here it is with an ink, which is a copper version, which has kind of patinaed very nicely over time. Uh, and then finally, here it is with a uh, Sailor 1911. This is a standard size. And in regard to a few other pens, uh, here it is with an Aurora Optima. Uh, here it is with a Pilot Falcon. Uh, and then finally, here it is with a Lamy All-Star. So here we go with the Keras 
pen company. And this is the Vertex. And the ink that I'm using here today is Vinta. And this is Blue Blood. It also has a Tagalog name to it, uh, but I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that. Uh, this is what the color looks like. Uh, it is a very highly saturated kind of sheen monster ink. We'll see if you can kind of see the sheen on there. Um, this is one of those inks like a lot of Organic Studios inks that turns into just about all sheen. But it has a real nice red sheen to it. But it is a highly dense uh, ink as well. Uh, here's what it looks like in regard to the Ackerman Shocking Blue. Uh, and another highly saturated ink, which is Noodler's Liberty's Elysium. Uh, this is what the bottles look like. Uh, this isn't the actual bottle of the uh, Blue Blood ink. For some reason, I had an issue with the cap or something. I don't know. It was just there was the, the bottle was leaking from somewhere, and I'm not quite sure where. And so I basically had to take it out and just decant it into a different bottle. Uh, but this is what the Blue ink looks like. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, as I mentioned in the review, I'm really liking this 1.1 nib. Uh, you can see here that there are thicker downstrokes, and then the side strokes are going to be thinner. Uh, you know, you're not going to get a lot of line variation out of here. You can get a little bit if you press a bit on it. Uh, and the ink flow is very nice on here. Uh, and in regard to reverse writing, you really don't use reverse writing on a stub, but it is possible. And in regard to some fast writing, there's no issue with it whatsoever. I haven't had any issues with the feed or anything along those lines. So here we have the Keras Pen Company Vertex. Uh, this is an interesting new design uh, and something that I think will be around for a while. Uh, that They've kind of ventured out from doing only metal pens and started doing some acrylic pens. They have another production line of an acrylic pen uh, as well. But uh, I think that it's nice to see Keras Pen Company venture out and do those types of things. And, uh, and this is a nice model. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.